Good morning, everyone. My name's Caroline Struthers, and I'm delighted to be here at the Medcoms Brunch uh, Club and have the opportunity to tell you about the Equator Network and how it supports uh, medical writers. And thank you, Peter, for the opportunity to speak today. I've been working with Equator for nearly three years now. I came to the world of medical research via quite an unusual route. I started out in arts marketing, then through trade, business, dictionary and digital publishing for Heinemann and um, Oxford University Press. Then a significant sidestep into information management and uh, literature searching for the Cochrane collaboration. And with Cochrane I had several other roles including managing editor, um, public engagement and training roles. And here now, I, now I'm Education and Training Manager uh, for Equator and I am passionate about improving communication and dissemination of medical research within the academic world and also to practitioners, patients and the public. So first I'll talk about why Equator was established in the first place and its mission, um, then what Equator actually is, uh, the resources we produce and disseminate to help medical writers and finally, how we ensure that our resources can be found and used effectively to improve the quality and transparency of the health research literature. So why, why Equator was established? Um, for a number of years, um, especially since in the early 90s, the advent of systematic reviews, the frustrations of systematic reviewers trying to um, systematically analyse uh, medical research literature the biomedical and clinical research community were becoming more and more alarmed by the appalling state of, of the medical research literature. Um, and the first attempt to try and do something about this practically was um, a group of um, researchers and uh, systematic reviewers came together um, to um, produce the consort statement, which was a consent consensus-based guidance designed to help uh, researchers who were reporting randomised trials, conducting and reporting randomised trials. And the first edition of consort statement was published in 1996 um, and then following that reporting guidelines for other clinical study designs followed such as um, STROBE for observational studies, STARD for diagnostic test accuracy studies, PRISMA of course for systematic reviews. Unfortunately, despite efforts of researchers and statisticians particularly to work together and produce consensus and evidence-based reporting guidance, the message was not getting through either to researchers or to the journals who published their articles. And something needed to be done, something more practical needed to be done to make sure the guidance could be found easily and used widely. So what is the Equator Network? Well, firstly, it's an acronym which stands for Enhancing the Quality and Transparency of Health Research. And this is the overarching principle which guides what we do. Equator was launched with a small grant from the NHS uh, just over 10 years ago by Doug Altman, who is a, uh, one of the leading, uh, world's leading biostatisticians. We're a small team um, based in Oxford. We have a UK centre here in Oxford and our head office is here too. And we have partners all, the, all over the world. We have centres in Paris, um, in Canada and in uh, Australia. And, but you know, we have partners and collaborators all over the world. And so now, um, in just over 10 years, Equator has become a recognised and influential international brand standing for honesty and integrity in the conduct and reporting of research. And what are reported guidelines? Well, they're a bit like shopping lists. They're reminders of what you need to, do to report to ensure your methods can be replicated and your results confirmed or refuted. They can be generic to make sure you report important details of your methods um, for a particular study design such as, as randomised trials, or they can be much more specific and remind, us, remind you of clinical details for a particular clinical specialty. Most of the internationally established guidelines include a checklist and often a flow diagram to help you report clearly how study participants move through the study. The guideline will also often include examples of good reporting for each item on the checklist. So this shows um, what the consort checklist for randomised trials look like and also the flow diagram. And checklists for the, for the, the 
more well-established generic reporting guidelines are often provided in Word, which allows you to annotate where in your manuscript you've reported the item of information required. And, that, and often um, many of the journals will, rec will require you to submit the checklist, the filled-in checklist, when you submit your article for publication. I've picked a few guidelines from the Equator database, which I think might be the most relevant to Medcoms, the Medcoms community. Consort is, of course, the most um, well-established and well-known reporting guideline, with many extensions to cover the growing variations in, in, in trial design. Using Consort for abstracts can make a huge difference to the discoverability of research articles, and this has the added benefit of discouraging spin. Sample is a reporting guideline specifically to help report statistical uh, methods and analyses. And there are numerous reporting guidelines for different clinical specialties, such as oncology, genetics, and many others. A lesser known um, and possibly very useful reporting guidelines um, for um, pharma, pharma um, medical writers uh, I came across is called Gnosis, um, which is, can be used for reporting phase one and, and phase two studies. And there's also guidance, um, a lot of guidance for case reporting and adverse event reporting, which is also um, useful for pharmacovigilance. So where are all these reporting guidelines and how can you find them? It's easy. Equator has a website giving easy access to our database of reporting guidelines, plus a huge range of other free resources to support anyone involved in writing and publishing of research. The key reporting guidelines are here on our homepage um, um, and accessible with just one click. You can access the full range of our resources uh, via the Equator Library of Research Reporting. We recognise that reporting guidelines are about content and structure rather than providing guidance on the, on the tricky art of scientific writing and successful publication. So we've assembly, assembled a large range of other useful resources relating to scientific writing and publishing um, including a collection devoted to industry-sponsored research. The database of reporting guidelines itself now contains 359, but don't panic. They don't all have the breadth and depth of consort, however, they are ex expertly collected and curated by our own dedicated Equator librarian. We only include guidelines in the database uh, which have been published in a peer-reviewed journal. Other than that, we are very inclusive, uh, as you can tell. Um, we haven't got the resources at the moment to quality check them beyond what the peer review and the publishing process provides. And we acknowledge and trust that reporting guidelines developers have a genuine interest in improving reporting in their field. And we're happy to support that by including their work in our database. We also offer advice and support for people wanting to develop a new reporting guideline and often discourage them from doing so um, because there will already be guidance available. The database is easily searchable using drop-down menus you can see by study type, by clinical area, or by um, section of reports such as abstract or um, statistical analysis. Or you can also search with free text. So how are we achieving the Equator mission and promoting the use of these reporting guidelines? Well, we work very hard to raise awareness of the of the significant problems resulting from inadequate reporting. We highlight the existence of the helpful tools um, and resources that we've, we've gathered together and um, to, to address this issue. And we try and engage with the professional communities to develop new resources and training to meet their needs. So in raising awareness, one way we do this um, uh, to, to, to raise awareness of the, of the problems of poor reporting and its impact by um, we attract high pro very high profile research leaders, health policy makers and editors um, to give an annual Equator lecture. And over the last 11 years Equator has earned huge support from key stakeholders um, in medical research. And we're delighted this year that Patrick Basoit, world leading research in diagnostic test um, accuracy testing will be giving the eighth annual lecture at the Peer Review Congress in Chicago. More practically, we have developed, um, recently developed a set of practical toolkits, online toolkits, um, which focus on key activities for improving the research literature. The first of these um, toolkits include a toolkit for writing up research, 
for implementing reporting guidelines in journals and for teaching research methods and reporting skills. So the toolkit for authors and medical writers aims to bring together everything you need to know to how to plan for publication and write up studies responsibly. It provides guidance and resources on the nitty gritty of finding and using the appropriate reporting guidelines to ensure your articles are complete, accurate and publishable. We've also developed courses and workshops to de deliver face-to-face -face training. The unique selling point for our face-to-face -face training is that it always includes hands-on writing activities. For example, our flagship publication school, takes, um, which takes place in Oxford every year in the summer, um, it takes participants through a writing a complete research article from start to finish in a week, section by section. Uh, the course also covers how to deal with journals and respond to peer review, as well as dissemination of research beyond journal publication, including communication with healthcare professionals, um, um, patients in the public, and blogging and so forth, social media. The course, uh, this course alone has attract part attracted participants from all over the world, as well as UK-based researchers, and has included medical writers from agencies and pharmaceutical companies, humanitarian policy-making organisations, and healthcare and university leadership. As I mentioned before, Equator has become an established and respected brand, standing for transparency and integrity in reporting medical research. Warts and all, for the ultimate benefit of patients. This is John Ioannidis, um, one of the most well-known scientific researchers of all time, very highly cited, who in 2005 wrote um, a very important essay, uh, Why Most Published Research Findings Are False, rather depressingly. Um, but he sums up his view, and that of many others, of Equator's important impact. But thank you very much for your attention. I hope you'll feel inspired to explore the Equator website and find much on there to inspire and help you in your work as medical writers.